Let's start with the first speaker. The first speaker is Stan Klaas from Business Informatics and Cognitive Psychology, and he will give a talk which I think will interest everybody on how to tweak our brain into making less errors. Jan, the floor is yours. Um, the question I'm going to talk to you today, or that I'm trying to solve, is why do you make mistakes and how can we avoid making mistakes? Um, first things first, why do you make errors? Why go things, uh, go things wrong? Um, suppose you want to block a speed or a traffic light, but one of the things that can go wrong is physical problems. You are blind, you cannot see, you don't know when the traffic is there, you cross the street and you make this fatal mistake. The second cause can be a lack of knowledge. When you see the traffic light, but you don't know the, what the green and the red light means, you can also make a mistake. And the third one is when you have too much on your mind, you overload it, you're overwhelmed, um, you make mistakes. So of things happen when you uh, are overloaded, when you have too much on your mind. Uh, one of the things is uh, that there is no room for learning. Suppose you're driving a car for the first time, you have no time to reflect on what you're doing. You're just trying to do the best, but you cannot think about what you're doing. Second one is uh, you make mistakes. Like I said, but the silly kind of mistakes, the mistakes you wouldn't usually make. It's not because of a lack of knowledge, but it's because you're overwhelmed. And the third thing is uh, you become slower. When you're watching television, somebody asks you a question, you start to slow down because you're thinking there's too much information going on in your head. And I want to focus on this Silly mistakes, how can we avoid them, how can we uh, not make them anymore? Well, uh, for example, meet uh, Thomas, he's a, a very busy man, he has a lot of things to do, and um, the question is, which advice would you give to Thomas? Well, the advice you would normally give to somebody who's panicking because there's too much on his plate is, keep, keep it easy, uh, don't worry, perform one thing at a time. Don't do, try to do everything together, do one thing at a time. But then the question is, how do you decide in which order you want to tackle all your problems? For example, after a, a presentation, a lot of questions are, are there, a lot of people raise their hands. How do you decide in which order you will answer these questions? Um, well, any order is good as long as it's not random. You have to use a system. Um, the next thing is there are a lot of systems to solve problems. For example, when you have to calculate a uh, certain uh, multiplication in uh, Europe or in Belgium, we learned the, the top left one, uh, which is a progressive method for calculating multiplication. In the Netherlands, they are uh, experimenting with a um, realistic method, and in some countries uh, of Asia, they use a more visual method uh, for multiplication. And then the question is, which of these systems is the best system to solve a problem? How do you know which system to apply? Um, well, the answer is you have to use a system that fits a system that fits with some things. Um, this is a picture of your brain. It's a complex machine who is capable of performing some tasks, for example, to hammer on a nail. Um, but the system that you will apply has to fit with the task in the first place. That's what we all learn. We learn systems in school that fit with some tasks. So if you have to solve a certain problem, you look at the task you have to solve and that decides which system you will use. But on the other hand, and this is understood, this is what my research is about, you also have to apply a system that fits with who you are, with your limits, with your preferences, and with your knowledge. And um, the main thing there is your preferences. You have a certain amount of preferences in your head, how you process information, how you deal with problems, and you have to, to be aware of that to apply the best possible system. We have to we will look into three of these uh, important factors. One of them is your learning style. So I have a question for you. If you read a newspaper, who reads the newspaper from beginning to end? Just raise your hand. When you read the text, start from the beginning to the end. And who reads bits and pieces everywhere, scans uh, headlines? Well, the first ones, they are sequential learners, while the second ones, they are global learners. And for the sequential learners, I have some advice. If you write a text, for example, you will write a book, then work part by part. For example, what chapter by chapter. And each chapter, you finish everything. So, when you uh, write this chapter, you work on the content of the chapter, you work on the formatting, you include pictures, tables, whatever. When the chapter is finished, only then you proceed to the next chapter. So that's for the sequential learners. 
work part by part, one at a time, and complete each part before you continue. For the global learners, they have to work phase by phase. For example, a phase can be work on the content first, the whole content, so make a content table, bullet points, write your text. And then in the next phase, you will focus on formatting. For example, you will include uh, bold uh, types, uh, and etc. And then maybe third phase is pictures, etc. Et so you work phase by phase, not part by part. And in each phase you focus on different aspects of what you're doing. Then second uh, question, second style, is field dependence. For example, if you tell a story, who will use a lot of details in their story? Straight your hand again. And then the other ones who will uh, focus on the essence. Well, uh, the first ones, you are uh, field dependent people, you need a lot of context, you need to be specific. While the second type, you are the field independent people, you have no troubles with abstract material. Yeah? Uh, for the first ones, I have this advice, take frequent short breaks, um, post this information the order that you receive it, and try to keep the solution parts connected. So work in small pieces and small parts. The second uh, kind of people, the independent people, they can be more relaxed, uh, don't mind solving problems in a random order, uh, with big leaves, it's easy for you to solve problems because you have this abstraction mechanism. And then lastly, uh, there's also the need for structure. So the third question, when you have to cook something in your kitchen, who is chaotic? The whole kitchen is a mess. <laughs> and the second type is who is well organized, very structured. Well, the first type here, they have a low desire for structure, uh, while the second type has a high desire for structure. If you're very structured, it's because you desire structure. Um, for the high desire for structure, I uh, have this simple advice. Maybe the things that I told you before, uh, you've already applied, but you probably also still like to hear about this. So you will not gain a lot from this presentation, but especially for the people with a low desire for structure, they will gain a lot from this presentation. Even if you don't like to put structure in your life, if you apply the former two rules, the former two slides, this will help you in making less mistakes. Thank you.